Hello and thank you for watching this channel dedicated to assistive technology research and development. This is first screencast in our mini-series on RFID and service robotics. So let's start um, with the question, why RFID? Uh, because um, it is one of the relatively inexpensive and widely available labeling technologies that service robots can use to reduce uncertainty in the environment. And we want to make it clear that we're not advocating here the use of RFID for consumer profiling and tracking. For example, RFID labels and individual grocery items, which many people and some consumer groups find objectionable. We're talking strictly about RFID for uh, service robots. Uh, it can be used only by service robots. So let's uh, take a look at uh, three service robots that we have developed in our laboratory. You can find multiple examples of other uh, service robots uh, on, uh, on the web. Uh, so the first one is uh, RG, which stands for Robotic Guide uh, for the Blind. Um, uh, so it was developed um, uh, as a robotic guide for visually impaired individuals in structured indoor environments. So it detects these RFID, passive RFID tags um, uh, through its uh, RFID antenna. So the uh, ID of each tag is sent to um, uh, the, uh, the antenna and then eventually makes its way to uh, the laptop uh, on the robot. And that's how RFID is making its uh, navigation decisions. And uh, the local obstacle avoidance is done through this uh, laser rangefinder. The next one is uh, Robocart, a robotic shopping assistant for the blind in uh, supermarkets. So here's a picture in one of the local uh, supermarkets. Um, so I was based on um, uh, the RG uh, Pioneer 2 uh, base. So we just took um, um, the RG base and uh, mounted a shopping cart uh, on top of it. Uh, and uh, here's this uh, uh, RFID antenna. And um, uh, it detects RFID uh, tags. Uh, so uh, right above uh, is the RFID tag, um, one of the RFID tags that we were placing in the local supermarket when we were testing the system. Uh, and uh, in another, in a different configuration, let me grab a different color, um, we actually mounted the RFID antenna uh, right in front of the robot um, uh, next to the sonar ring, which uh, we were not using, so right over here. And it was used to detect um, a very small RFID, passive RFID tags in uh, RFID mats, so these islands of uh, certainty, so um, uh, RFID mats. It was uh, an RFID mat. Um, mats placed at different lo uh, locations in the environment, actually, at the beginning and the end of every aisle with small RFID tags. And so we placed one at the beginning of the aisle and at the end of the aisle. And so the robot uh, were, uh, um, was uh, detecting those mats. And finally, iWalker Rollator Mounted Navigation Assistant for the Elderly that we developed um, uh, in collaboration with the company uh, AT Sciences and uh, the University of Pittsburgh. Uh, you can watch uh, videos of iWalker on this uh, 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 on, on, on this on this uh, channel. Just search for iWalker, and there's a couple of videos. So we uh, basically took our experiences with um, uh, uh, Robocart and uh, placed a small antenna um, uh, next to one of the back wheels. So here's an RFID antenna. Uh, and uh, it, it was detecting the uh, uh, passive RFID tags uh, in uh, RFID mats. So here's an example of an RFID mat with uh, several uh, RFID tags uh, embedded underneath it. Uh, the mat is really robust uh, and the tags are really robust so you can step on them, you can jump on them and so forth. So um, let's talk about reduction of uncertainty in the environment. Um, so. Um, uh, so modern environments uh, are uh, indoor or outdoor are very very complex tend to be uh, complex and dynamic in nature and um, uh, uh, uncertainty is one of the features uh, of, uh, of many modern environments um, so they just um, it, there's a lot of noise, um, uh, a lot of uh, a lot of traffic especially in airports and uh, supermarkets uh, and so uh, if uh, there is a, uh, a service robot, so here's what's um, uh, uh, 
uh, draw a simple smiling service happy service robot um, so if um, uh, we place a service robot in uh, one of these environments so let me write it out service robot um, in one of these environments then um, one of the things one of the fundamental tasks that this uh, small guy uh, has to do or a big guy I you know depends on the service robot is to reduce uncertainty uh, and um, uh, well uh, the objective is uh, to, to remove uncertainty as much as possible uh, or reduce it as much as possible because it is dangerous for service robots to get lost become disoriented because they uh, are doing uh, life critical tasks designed to do and one of the one of the um, technologies available uh, for uncertainty reduction is uh, RFID as we previously uh, mentioned in the beginning of this uh, of this screencast uh, so um, okay so how can we instrument and represent um, uh, the environment assuming on the assumption that we're going to be using um, RFID um, so okay let's envi oops, environment okay uh, environment um, so um, uh, Environment, uh, okay, so environment is instrumented with passive RFID tags, uh, and RFID tags correspond to high-level landmarks um, uh, in a specific environment. And um, uh, the, the, the service robot uh, has a database of uh, propositions, okay, so uh, for example, such as path 12, 13, uh, follow hallway, right, where 12 and 13 are uh, uh, um, tag IDs. Okay, so or tag uh, uh, tag numbers. So, uh, for example, this is the semantics of this is that um, uh, when you see tag twelve, uh, um, if you want to get to tag thirteen, you need to follow hallway. And uh, here's another um, a proposition: uh, path twenty one one make U turn. So when you see uh, tag twenty one and you want to get to uh, tag one, then you uh, make uh, make uh, make a U turn. So if you um, uh, so let's uh, put a couple of other uh, propositions: um, uh, path ten eleven turn left. Uh, so when you see um, uh, tag ten. Uh, and uh, you want to get to tag 11 then you um, uh, turn left um, when you see tag 14 and you want to get to tag 15 then let's say you will uh, turn um, uh, uh, right well not you but the, the, the service robot will turn right okay uh, you the service robot all right so um, let me grab a uh, different uh, color Mm, and uh, so follow hallway uh, uh, and and make U turn and turn left are behaviors, and every service robot uh, will have its own idiosyncratic set of behaviors. It depends on its its capability, its objectives, uh, what types of things uh, it needs to do uh, in the environment, right? So if it needs to navigate, then these are sensible behaviors for indoor structured indoor environments. So follow hallway, make you turn, turn left, turn, uh, turn right, right? So uh, and again, so these are uh, uh, RFID, um, RFID. Uh, tags uh, that when detected uh, invoke enable or disable uh, these behaviors right such as uh, follow hallway make you turn uh, turn uh, turn left and uh, and so forth uh, and uh, these behaviors again are uh, specific to um, uh, a service robot so how can we um, now? Uh, let's say that we have uh, uh, we have uh, uh, the base of propositions. Uh, so the environment can then be represented as a uh, connected graph, and we're not implementation specific here. So obviously you can all you can convert these propositions into SQL uh, tables, tables in the uh, SQL databases. So um, uh, so they can be represented as a graph where uh, the nodes are tag IDs and uh, nodes are uh, connected by uh, behaviors so the graph is uh, directed uh, and then uh, a search algorithm um, for example a breadth first search or depth first search or a star if you want to be more sophisticated can be used to uh, obtain uh, uh, paths that uh, satisfy specific uh, search criteria 
So, uh, so let's continue with this search, uh, uh, with this, uh, with this graph example, right? I just grab a different color, uh, green color. So, for example, uh, tags one and two um, may be connected with the behavior follow hallway, right? And uh, tags uh, two and three uh, may be connected with the behavior uh, turn, uh, turn, uh, uh, turn left. Okay, uh, and uh, again, the, 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 uh, this is a directed graph because uh, the semantics is that uh, if you detect one and you want to get to two, uh, then you follow hallway, right? Um, uh, then from two to one, if you go from two to one, for example, and follow hallway may or may not work, right? It may work and it may not necessarily work. So when you detect three and you want to get to 12, then make a U-turn. If you detect three and you want to get to four, you then, for example, okay, you, you again follow hallway, right? And uh, let's say from four to 11, you uh, uh, also make uh, a U-turn, right? Uh, and these behaviors are uh, the procedures that uh, a service robot uh, can reliably execute, right? Um, uh, and if you want to get from uh, 11 to 12, then you turn right. From 12 to 11, you follow hallway. Uh, you, the service robot. And uh, uh, from 13 to 14, you um, again uh, uh, turn uh, turn uh, turn right. Okay. Uh, well, this is just a, a, a sample map. And let's uh, complete the cycle. From 14 to 1, uh, you. Um, uh, let's say turn left. Okay, well thank you for watching. Uh, please come back and coming up in the next screencast uh, RFID based path planning and path execution.